Okay, welcome to Wing It at my cooking show. Today we're going to be making a chicken dinner. Um, this is going to be a good meal, but um, it's going to be taking a bit of time to get it done. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is cooking the chicken. The chicken is going to take about 40 minutes to cook, so there's going to be a bit of a break in between, but only about a 20-minute break as about 20 minutes from now I'm going to be preparing my vegetables and stuff that I'm going to need to be um, doing for this chicken dinner. So let's get started. I got right here, it's a um, chicken thigh with the skin on. Nice little chicken thigh. Oops, did I? Ah, oh, that's what I can. Um, sorry for that. All right, we got a chicken thigh. We got a, got a skin on chicken thigh. It has the bone inside of it. It's a nice uh, piece of meat to have. Very good if you're cooking for one. Take it out of the packaging. You're gonna quickly dry this off. Got a paper towel here. Got a paper towel. Give it a nice pat to dry it off. Now we're gonna season it. Starting from the meat side. Gonna hit it with a bunch of salt. Some pepper. And poultry season. This is basically just, um, I believe, sage, rosemary, thyme. Yeah, just your basic um, poultry seasonings. Put it all on that. Turn it over. Same thing on this side. Salt. Some pepper. And some seasoning. Rub it all in. You gotta put this on top of a pan. And we're gonna grab some butter. I'm going to take this butter. Always good handling the meat. You know I'm the best meat handler. We're going to take this butter. We're just going to layer on top of the skin. And this is going to help when it cooks to uh, make the skin nice and golden brown. Just a couple of pieces like that. All right. Now all we're going to do is we're going to put it in our oven. I've got my toast oven right here. It's set to 400 degrees. It's a convection oven. I um, probably want to do 415 if you don't have a convection oven. Um, but this is going to take 40 minutes. Um, so I'm going to go on a 20 minute break. And when I come back, then we're going to be cooking our vegetables. And we're going to be preparing everything else. It should take about 20 minutes at that point. but Let's see what happens. All right, be back in 20 minutes. Okay, so we're back. It's been 20 minutes. Chicken's been cooking for 20 minutes. So let's get started on our vegetables. Uh, the first vegetable we're gonna be doing is some asparagus. Uh, let's give you a quick thing. I got some asparagus right here. Um, yeah. Gotta be using all five of these. Put that to the side. Take a knife. Let's take off these hard roots. We discard those. So now we got these nice pieces of asparagus. Let's dress these. We're just gonna be putting a little bit of olive oil on them. Not much, like just like a like a splash, like a quick splash. Grab it a plate so that I don't mess up the um, cutting board. Yeah, just like as fast as a drizzle as you can do. Like that's probably about like a teaspoon of olive oil right there. Just gonna take that, move our vegetables throughout it so that they get nice and coated. Then we're gonna put a little salt on them, a little pepper. We're gonna 
pepper, some garlic powder, healthy amount of garlic powder, and a little onion powder. Our basic seasons. All right, mix these around. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to throw it on that same pan that we're cooking the chicken on. So I'm going to go grab that from the oven. Right now it's set 17 minutes left. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to grab the chicken. It's starting to look pretty good. Chicken's starting to look cooked, but it's not like totally cooked. So like our 40 minute time frame is pretty good. We're going to surround our um, ch chicken with the asparagus. And then we're just going to throw it right back into the um, oven. And that should cook the asparagus in about the same time that um, it finishes that chicken. All right, while that's going on, let's uh, make some mashed cauliflower. Go back down here. Got a head of cauliflower here. Let me push that up a bit so you can see. Take it off. There's some next salt on the cutting board. I like to make my mashed cauliflower in an instant pot. Because I like when um, the liquid really has a chance to infuse with the cauliflower. I think it makes more smooth mashed potato. In mashed potato, I mean obviously mashed cauliflower. So just removing some of this green stuff. I'm just going to cut up about a cup of uh, cauliflower, Florex, which should be good right now. So in instant pot pot, inside this instant pot pot, we have a uh, steamer bag. Throw our cauliflower florets in here. Next thing we're going to throw in there is just a uh, few pieces of garlic. That's better. I didn't have my light on. So yeah, garlic. Just put in, I got five cloves in there. Next, gonna season this with a little bit of salt and a little bit of smoked paprika. It's gonna give a nice little smoky taste to our cauliflower. All right. We need to add some liquid, so I'm gonna add some water. That should be good. That's probably about two tablespoons of water into this. And now let's go over to the instant pot. Turn with me, come with me, and you'll see. Put this in the instant pot. And we're gonna put this in for five minutes at a regular pressure. Uh, high pressure. Five minutes, this should probably actually take 10 to 15. Uh, that's all of our cooking steps. There's nothing left to cook except for our gravy, which we're going to cook at the end. So, nothing left to do right now except go on another break, wait for all these bells and whistles to bell and whistle. I'll see you then. Now we're back. All right. So everything has beeped off. So let's start with the uh, uh, cauliflower mash. We won't want that to be sitting for forever. So we're just going to release the steam on that Instapot. Come around to the Instapot. And I'm just going to cancel and run. Let's take them out. Not a bit of an angle here. Let me correct you. See you thrown out. Smell really good in there. You can smell that garlic and a little bit of that paprika. Oh, this is a great way to make cauliflower mash. The cauliflower becomes so soft because it's been under pressure with all that steam. It basically falls apart by itself and it's a really good mix. So we're going to just leave this here to let the steam dissipate from there. And let's deal with that chicken. 
We'll come back around here. We gotta pull the chicken out of the convection oven. Bring it over to my tray. Good. Got some really good looking skin here. You see the only brown parts are actually where the seasoning was. Um, our um, asparagus looks nice and cooked through too. We're going to transfer all of this to our serving dish. We're just going to have you a plate here. Pair of tongs and I'm just going to move this to here. Move these asparagus on to here as well. All right. Now, this pan we're going to use in our making of our gravy. We're going to scrape everything out of this and put it into a little dish. So let's do that now. Let's make some gravy. Here's our dinner plate. So come with me, and we'll see how we make keto gravy. So. Right here, I have this little, um, it's an egg dish. It's for cooking one egg at a time. I like to use a dish like this or something like this where I don't want to make too much um, gravy. I don't want to drown everything in gravy. But let's begin. First, we need a tablespoon of butter. So I'm just going to grab that off camera. You don't need to see me grab a tablespoon of butter. You see the lines on the sticks of butter. You can figure out how to measure a tablespoon yourself. I am not your mother. So I put a tablespoon of butter in there. Put the heat on to a medium low. We're going to melt this butter. It's going to take a minute, but while that's melting, we're going to take this pan with all of our drippings from the chicken and the asparagus. We're going to scrape everything off, and we're going to pour it into the same, the same um, little dish that we're going to make our gravy. Try to get everything out of it, because all that is really good stuff, and you want that in your chicken. All this, all these crispy bits is what makes a good drink. So, take this off this fork. Mix everything around. Okay, it's all nice and melted. Next thing we're going to add is a little bit of chicken bone broth. We're going to just add a little more flavor, a little more liquid. We're going to fill it up right there. Like I said, I don't want to make too much gravy because this is only going on the potatoes and the chicken salad. Mix this around. Taste for seasoning. Needs some more salt, needs some more of that poultry seasoning. It's not going to be added to salt. And the rest of my poultry seasoning. This is the last of my poultry seasoning. Luckily, I had just enough to make this dish. Turn that around. That's good. Now we need to thicken this gravy. To thicken this gravy, we're going to be using xanthan gum. The second secret ingredient of keto diet. The first secret ingredient is cauliflower, the second secret ingredient is xanthan gum. Put a double um, pinch of it in there, and you're actually going to do two of those. 
probably close to like half a teaspoon. And then just mix around. And just keep mixing until everything gets thick. Shouldn't take long. All right, perfect. And I turn off that heater. Look at that. We already got great. Oops. Slip a little. I'll clean that up later. So yeah, we got a nice thick gravy now. Look at that. Ah, there it is. One more. Mm. Mm, that tastes so good. Back over to the table. Next, we're going to be meeting our mashed potatoes. I got a pan here. I'm going to go grab our mid spot, grab our cauliflower and garlic from this spot. Let's have it in right here. Pulling the um, colander out, the steamer basket. Put that in there. That's it. Now for this, we're going to add about um, the other half of the tablespoon of butter that we had. So this entire dish has two tablespoons of butter. All right. Next, we're going to be using my brand new tool, which is a hand mixer. Um, immersion blender, but this one has attachments for a hand mixer, which I like to use this with um, cauliflower. Putting that on. Still can't see. Yeah. But there, that's better. Shot for you. All right. Now I uh, get this on the lowest setting. I'm just gonna quickly pull. The butter just needs to help. It helps the butter melt on it. There we go. And we gotta make this a uh, nice, light, fluffy uh, mix of uh, There we go. Nice fluffy mix. All right, let's plate everything up. So we got chicken here. We gotta be putting in our cauliflower mash. And you see how that um, paprika gives a nice light red coloring to it. Makes it really look more like a mat, uh, potato instead of a cauliflower. Helps the illusion of the potato, as they say. I don't know who they are, but they say it. Move everything over there. Next that gravy. A nice mix. Put it over the, the chicken. This is a thick gravy. Maybe I should have only used one um, double pinch. But this will still taste good. Put it on our mash. Put a little more on our chicken. The heat should help um, even it out a bit. Yeah, definitely only want to use one pinch, I think, instead of the two pinch. This is a little thick. It's a little more gelatinous than I like it, but it's still got to be good. It's still got to taste like gravy. Mm, definitely. I love me some gravy. All right. It's time for a picture. 
So I need you to move on that paper. I realized I didn't have my light on this entire time. Put a light on for when I go for the meeting. I'm just going to quickly take a picture of this. Finger as a sort of special like situation, trying to move around that gravy, make it look more appealing for the picture. Perfect. Oh, that wasn't set up. Oh, there we go. Nope, that wasn't center either. Gonna need again that time. Oh my god. Stay steady, legs. That's the picture. That's the picture right there. All right. Now, time for a taste test. Back. Two up. That is clean. Take a bite of this chicken. I just cut right into the bone. There we go. Mm. Skin is perfectly crisp. The chicken is nice and well cooked through. Look at that. Nice and fully cooked through. Gravy's still really good, but I do think that um, you do only want to use one double pinch of the uh, um, xanthan gum, not two of them. It is a little too thick, but it's still really good. It's still very gravy. Mm. With zero carbs. Mm. Asparagus? Tastes like asparagus. <laughs> We don't do anything fancy with asparagus. We just oven roasted it inside the juices of the chicken. So it's good. It's really good. But combined all together, it's a really nice chicken dinner. Something that you could serve for your entire family. If you're going to do the entire family, I wouldn't just say do the chicken breast. I'd say make it a whole chicken. It's going to take longer. I would say rotisserie if you can. If you can't do that, um, oven, when you oven roast it, you want to raise it above whatever bed that you're going to be cooking it on. But um, that's not something I can show you right now because I'm cooking for one in a very strict diet. So that is going to be it for tonight. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Keep eating good.